we still get started. First of all, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I came into post June 21. Uh, after spending six years with the Scottish FA, working in the, the national performance programme there, so working at various age groups, uh, under 15 national level, 16 national level, 17, 19 in A squad. Prior to that, I'd spent nine years at Celtic Park as head of girls and women's football as well, so uh, that's been predominantly been my background. Um, and I went to obviously the SFA for the last six years, so hoping then I could bring that experience to Motherwell and, and change it. When I came in in, in, in June 21, we had a first team that were competing within the Premier League. We finished 12 points that season. I was lucky enough that I'd managed to capture three or four games towards the end of the season and to really see what was needed. Um, and what I'd done in my first couple of days within coming into post is that I met with the current squad of players that were there. I asked them three simple questions. I asked them to tell me what they felt that was missing from the squad, what they felt we needed to do to improve, and also what did the rest of the league think of them as a team. So you can imagine all of the answers were you know, kind of classroom based answers, you know, very much simple feedback. I did tell the players that this is their opportunity to make a difference. So be honest, if you wanted to write and draw funny pictures on it, then, then do it, but this is your opportunity and we'll get another one very soon. So I've done that and I listened to them and they felt that a lot of certain the bigger teams was an opportunity to make up the goal difference. Um, very much a free hit in that sense when we played a Celtic, a Rangers, a Glasgow City. Uh, and I did watch them a couple of times against Celtic and, and they were just, these teams were just far stronger. So I felt very early doors, it was a real weakness. Not just in terms of what I've seen on the pitch, but the mentality, the body language, it was like they were already beat before they went on the pitch. Um, and I didn't like that. So the second day, then I let 10 players go because I felt if this is going to evolve any better quality and it's the only way you evolve as a team and everybody will know that and then after that I then decided to get rid of all the staff that was here as well and no disrespect to the staff that was here I wanted to bring in more people and the first thing I wanted to do was make a statement now what I've done is I've brought Leanne Crichton and Leanne Crichton is a very high profile female player played with Scotland she's very heavily involved in the media involved with BBC so for me, it brought a serial winner into changing room. It was probably something that was lacking early doors, or it was never here before. So that really captured the imagination, not just the current group that were here, but external people in terms of Motherwell are, are finally going to take this serious here. Um, that was kind of early stages of the first team. At the community side, it, there was no girls academy. And bear in mind, I've said there was no handover. There was just a blank canvas when I walked in the door. The Community Trust uh, was a participation programme which is headed by Dawn and they do a fantastic job. They had two under, they had an under 13s team and an under 15s team, regional players, so no really performance based, it was more about participation which is a big part of the ethos that Dawn and the members of her staff have up there which is fantastic and how they engage with the community and all the different projects that they run. So I very realised that we were going to try and compete and a big part of my remit and my role was to develop a, a girls academy. Let's fast forward to where we are just now then. It was a kind of whistle-stop tour in terms of the early stages. Uh, this is where we are now. Just pop it on again. So in terms of the Premier League squad right now, no, sorry, last season, um, the difference in, in terms of it was a brand new team. A big part of my vision at the start and a part of the strategy was how we have to create role models. Role models for young female Motherwell fans and young female Motherwell football players because not everybody that comes here and plays in Motherwell is Motherwell supporters. So that season we just had my first season, we were 15 points better off than the season before. We were actually very lucky not to finish in fifth place and we should have finished because out of the two teams that finished ahead is uh, Aberdeen who finished two points above us. We actually took seven out of nine points off Aberdeen and Spartans we took nine out of nine off them, which was incredible. So it was other games and just had a wee bit of consistency. We tried to change the brand of football, it was about myself and Leanne trying to implement our principles both in and out of possession, which we have done and we were successful in that. We played at Fir Park once, which was an incredible achievement to give the players that platform and to highlight to the supporters. Unfortunately we lost the game one now to Hamilton in a local derby. Um, but a big part of that for me was the, the engagement. Obviously that was something that the, the players felt when I came in that was missing, was that engagement with the football club. And, and I know the new gaffer, Stephen Hamill, has spoke about that one club mentality recently and I think it probably didn't exist when, when, I, when I first came in, but I think it certainly does now. 
the engagement with the, with the fans, um, the opportunity to come and watch them play, something that we're trying to work really hard on and I'll explain in a bit more detail. The key stakeholders within the club, so for me the commercial department, the media department, because the girls and women never had their own separate Twitter, it was, it was one Twitter account which was dominated by the men and, and we understand the reason why. So social media became important and obviously we've developed the academy pathway as well. So that's a quick snapshot, if we forward it on again, Sally. This is what we've built in just over a year. So we've got a women's first team, we've then now got an under 18 squad, under 16 squad, under 14 squad, under 12s, and then underneath that we've got the community trust who we've still kept a really strong relationship with because that needs to be part of the pathway. This process to get it here was difficult, and when it becomes a performance environment, it becomes difficult in a sense that you need to make tough decisions. There was a lot of players that maybe never crossed over for the community trust into the academy because the reality for us is best v best now. We're playing against Celtic, Rangers, Glasgow City, Hibs, Hearts. And it's been difficult. And, and, and I can't say it's no been. And, and we're trying to turn a lot of young kids that have played regional football, where it's participation and the performance, where you're playing best v best. And that's something that, that, that's a challenge to myself and a challenge to my staff. And we're still trying to embrace that challenge. We've built an academy programme in under a year. This is incredible for having no kids to get to a level. We have nearly in excess of 80 young female players slash athletes who are representing this football club, which is incredible. So, you know, we've came a long, long way, but it's still to get stronger, still to get better. For me, this is just the foundations of what we're trying to build in terms of how we're trying to move it forward. Um, but this relationship is still really important for me with the community trust. That, that we still they have a, they have a couple of younger teams at 12s and down the way and then that's a direct pathway into the academy system which is very similar to the boys as well so I just pop one one so I'm going to go back to the 4th of November 2018 Scottish Cup final we lost the game 8 0 to Hibs and I was there that day as part of my role with the Scottish Fair Hill. So I was there as part of my role with the Scottish FA. And the reason I've done this is because I need to capture how far we've came. And for me, that day, when I watched Motherwell against that, you know, a lot of the players that played with Hibs were part of the National Performance Academy, which I was looking after at that point as well. So I knew the qualities they had, and I knew it was going to be a difficult afternoon. I didn't, I didn't expect it to go the way it went, if I'm being honest. And the difficult thing for us, this was the national final, and obviously we, we lose the game 8-0. Now let's just fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. We go to Edinburgh and we win 3-2. Right. In that time frame, Hibs are now full time. Right. So we're just over, around about four years, roughly about four years, say, from that cup final to now, which is incredible in terms of the turnaround. And it's a testament to the level of professionalism that the players have took on board, the standards that myself and Leanne are driving every day, and we do, we drive it every day, where I'm constantly chatting, chatting on Alan's door, asking for X, Y and Z, because we're desperate to make things better. Would it be the first team that can compete? As you know now, the SPFL have took over, so the level of professionalism has went there. The, the teams that are full-time, so you've got City, Rangers, Celtic, Hibs and Hearts. We go to Edinburgh and we beat a full time team 3 2. We're still part time. And we are still part time. But even though we're part time, we're asking our players to train full time. So they don't have the status on a bit of paper of being a full time professional football player. But I tell you what, they do have the mentality of one. And it's something that we've tried to implement because in order for us to compete and stay with these teams, we need to train more. Tuesday morning, around at 7 am, and it's morning at 7. Back in the night at 5 o'clock. They finish do a, a, a gym session, five o'clock to six, then back on the pitch six to seven, and they're back in tomorrow night six to half seven, off on Thursday, back in Friday morning seven a.m., back in Friday night six o'clock. The volume of training these players are giving this football club is incredible, and they're doing it because they're desperate to improve, and they're desperate to get better. And if we can go to Edinburgh and win, and if we can take Glasgow City to ninety-seven minutes and fifty-two seconds before they eventually score the last kick of the body beat us, it shows me and it shows. Hopefully the football club and the fans, the strides this team's took. Now we in order for us to evolve, I've said it, we need quality and we've done it. The biggest challenge for me and Leanne moving forward is that we need to stay with these teams. We cannot fall further behind. I mean look at Rangers budget, it's one point six million pounds. If Rangers win 
their game tonight, sorry, right, it's the first leg tonight against Benfica. If they win next Wednesday, they get £400,000 to get into the Champions League group stages. £400,000. That's, that's what we play against on Sunday, a team that's built on £1.6 million. Pound. And my budget's nowhere near that. Um, See, on that point, is there a yeah. reason why they don't have the sponsors in the strips? That's because we don't have one. We've got TCL on the shorts, the same as yeah. the men. But no, I mean, like, don't worry, like, the feedback for a lot of supporters is they love the, the, they love the retro that, strip. Uh, yeah. They love it, but, but... If that's an income stream that you... 100%. Think, yeah. And we need that. And it's the sleeves, it's the back. We need it. We, we need it. Um, and is that something that the commercial team... Mother will work on or would you just have to do that separately? They're, they're working on it but I try and drive a lot of it myself in my remit because it's not just, obviously I've got an overarching responsibility absolutely everything when it comes to the girls' women's department as well as being the first team manager because I'm a coach um, but a lot of the stuff takes me out of my comfort zone in terms of how I'm trying to drive it forward and the standards I'm trying to implement. So, I don't know. question just with regards to that, so obviously you don't like Candice, did it surprise you the depth of changes that you had to make coming in? In June 2021, was that a significant surprise or was it kind of what you anticipated? When I seen the remit, yeah. when they advertised the job remit, um, I knew it was going to be tough. Yeah. And it's something that when I spoke to Alan Burroughs, we, we, we had a chat first because I think some, a couple of people had mentioned me and he wanted to speak to me and we spoke and uh, the first thing I said to him, the remit, I said there needs to be a real sense of realism in terms of what it is you're trying to, you know, yeah. what you want for somebody because there's only 24 hours in a day. Um, with the setup that you now have, and obviously I can see there's been a massive changes. Yeah. I was at that game with Tom. Uh, that's all that yeah. um, With the changes that you've made, obviously it's been massive, excluding the full-time teams, which is obviously, I presume, is where the game is to go, is yes. the full-time enterprise for the ladies and the girls' teams. How does our setup compare with our kind of peers in yes. the, the league? Can, can, I, can I say one thing I'll say as well, even though that we don't have the status of being a professional team, I still think our coaching staff. No, I, I no, no. I mean, yeah. that's what I was just going to. Our coaching staff, I think, is just as good. Okay. It's just as good as what these it's other just teams more have. The, the setup and maybe the infrastructure, maybe the funding. Yeah. Where do we, where do we compare? I don't know everybody's budget, but what I will say is that you know, certainly for our objectives in house for this coming season is to finish top half. And I think if we can take this team top half in the league, I think it'd be an incredible achievement. So I don't even know what I know part like this, so I'm investing a lot of money in it now as well. I don't know what the budget, their budgets are compared to what we do, but what I can say is that it's probably the most that Motherwell's ever invested in the girls' and women's programme, which, which is happening just now. But I don't know the total figure. And um, just more about the infrastructure, do the teams that we compete against, do they have that academy structure in place? Yes. And is our academy on par with what they're providing? Or better, I'm assuming we're heading towards the better. Yeah, that's we're, we're striving towards that right now. I'm, yeah. I'm realistic where we're at. I rely on volunteers who are coaches. Um, a lot of these clubs might have paid coaches, which then brings a better quality of coach. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I'm striving towards, and it's something that we speak about in house. And I think what I'm trying to do is that because I left the Celtic system so long ago and I knew the position where it was. The reality is that Celtic and a lot of these clubs, clubs are stronger at youth academy level, which is going to be the norm because we've just built a system. So that's where I'm trying to be more creative in terms of how I think and what we can offer. And that's why like, we have morning sessions. No other club in this country have sessions at 7am for their academy kids. But through my studies and, and, and my experience working in Europe and studying in Europe, it's the norm to train preschool. So we've tried to implement this. We had 40 kids at uh, Ravens Creek at 7 o'clock this morning. So even though our kids may be over the same level as your Celtic, the Rangers, the City Hearts, we're trying to make them better. And we're trying to bridge the gap with being creative. And, and that's, that's a challenge. Uh, the, the, the other teams, can, uh, maybe uh, if they're more at our level, the Spartans and the Hamels yeah. and the Party Thistles in this world, if they're part-time, do they finish up? Do they go and train at 7 in the morning as well? Or is that something that we do? We're the only, only, only club that does this. We're the only one club that does it. That's from seeing even so at the academy. When, when do they train? Just in the evenings? Presumably evenings. Other guys the evenings. evenings we, we, I want to bridge the gap. I'm not content mm -hmm. of being a team that... You know, I want to compete with these teams. I want to be above... Well, eight teams and, and then you're getting closer to, yeah, right to, to the Hearts. Aye, yeah, that's, that's from the desperate to be. I mean, like last season, the league table doesn't lie. Hearts won the great, but Hearts won the brother done the summer. is brought in eight full time players and almost went kind of hybrid. How far away are we for that? Oh. I don't know. I don't know, and I think maybe get back to obviously 
the investment, commercial the more we can generate. Yeah. You know, for us it doesn't really run, run up. I mean, I've had dumpteen conversations with Alan. Alan's always been good and been very honest that we don't, you know, as long as we, we don't run at a, you know, a loss right. in, in, in that sense that, you know, we can, you know, we can try and generate revenue. I want to compete with these teams. I'm desperate to compete with them. I'm doing everything in my power. To make sure is, is, that we stay. Some extra kind of ball room away that we're going to get to that next level. Is, is, is finance going to be? You, you, you can't go and get full time players, you know. If I you know. I mean, like, I, I hate to sit on my walk towards, and it's like you know, it's even the, it's obviously the same in here for the men. They want to bridge the gap as well, and mm. it's resources, it's investment, which is, which is going to help us do it. And um, I feel that. Oh, sorry, I feel like you know it would be interesting to know how much our hearts paying these eight full time players or coaches that they're brought in because if we could find some sort of sponsorship for things like yeah. the uh, jersey, can that bring in one player? Can it bring in two? Yeah. It'd no, be interesting I, I, to see if there's... I get it. I don't know whether that hybrid way of working does work for parts or something we could look to implement yeah. because that would then start bridging that gap yeah. Yeah. as well. Listen, it? me, as I said, I know that Habs will get a, a bigger budget and listen, we go to Edinburgh and win. So yeah. I'm really confident with the group of players that I have, and I'm confident in how we're trying to coach them in a tactical sense, and how we want them to be technically in order to play our style of football. So, yeah. myself and Anne are driving standards every day. The reality is, I mean, I, I, I constantly speak to Alan about can we get, it? you know, I'm not going to get him, but I need to keep him on his toes because he's my gaffer, and I need to, you know. It's, it's clear there's heart and soul there, and there's passion, and there's drive from the ladies and the girls. It's, it's looking at rewarding that yeah. as well with those yeah. professional contracts Aye. as yeah. well. Yeah, and, and getting because them. that then yeah. drives forwards. And I'm desperate, and 100%, and I'm desperate to get them out there more. I mean, the, 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 the boys' academy gets a lot of funding direct for the SFA. Yeah, it's club academy, academy Scotland. Scotland. No, no, no right, right now we don't, but there's been massive changes. So it used to be, so you've got the boys is called club academy Scotland, and the girls is called national academy program. So hopefully, with that three million pot that the boys get for all the clubs, hopefully some of that so yeah, chunk of that money hopefully. needs to. Yeah. Uh, every other association in, 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 in the world will, will, will be doing it. You'd have to think that the more and more girls and ladies football is taking over. I mean, surely the funding is going to have to kind of spread out. Hundred percent, aye, hundred percent. And I think even for us, I mean, like, I hope I can. I've got a couple of bullet points, but I probably have touched on a lot of that that, that stuff there. And even for myself, in terms of. Obviously, the roles I spoke about, it's all that responsibility. The full girls and women's system, myself and Leanne, responsibility and accountability falls on me. My relationship with Alan, being the chief executive of the football club, I've worked here before in, in the boys' academy, so I understand the values of the club. And I, you know, for me, it was about I could transfer a lot of the good work that's done in the boys' academy and the girls because the model's there. The model's there. So for us, it's like, you know, how do we then develop our players who might in time we might be able to sell them on? The biggest thing for me is that we don't lose players for nothing. Yeah. And right now we are in a position, so we just pump on one. Right now we are in a position where we've got a young kid who plays in the first team, she's 17 years old, her name's London Pollard, Manchester United are sniffing about her. Manchester United are already We could lose her for nothing to Manchester United. Whereas if we had her on, had her on some sort of professional contract, then it means we would get something back. So even when you think about it, there's a lot of interest in young Lennon Miller, there's been other players, etc. that have went, you know, I think that the, the, the product in terms of what the Boys Academy done in here over the years has been magnificent. And you look at the money, James Scott going to Hull one point, you know, it's been brilliant. So for me, the, the, with the direction now that it's going in here, with the professional model through the SPFL, the standards, you know, the investment has grown. Even, I, I mentioned I'm going to Ibrox tonight to watch Rangers. There's a solidarity payment for UEFA as well, I think it's just under about 20k, which we get as well because Rangers and Glasgow City compete in the Champions League. And it'll probably be the same for the, for the men as well because Celtic Rangers in the Champions League, etc. And going back to you know, keeping our most talented but players. But the difference is huge compared to 20 grand, I mean, you've got uh, that's bottoms really compared to. Uh, you know, so it's see, 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 for us to be in the position where we are just now and we're only a year into this, you know, for me, this is a five year, this is a five year project. See if we can get this squad top half. We need to evolve every year because, for me personally, I don't want the gap getting bigger, and it can't get bigger. So, you know, and that's why we're trying to get as much out of these players as possible. Like, to give you an example: Jillian Angles is the club captain, right? So she's a school teacher, full-time school teacher. So she's in this morning at 7 a.m. She then has to leave at 8 to go to school. And I've already spoke to Scott in the media department. Try to show people this is her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. 
and she gives everyone for us football club. She's club captain for a reason because she's the one that's driving standards. She's back after school tonight. She's back in tonight. She's, she's back into school tomorrow morning, and then back in the morning at seven a.m. the flight. So you know she's driving standards. Not look at them sometimes, and it's like obviously we're trying to make sure that their well-being, mental cycle has to come into it as well. Looking at sleep, their sleep patterns as well. We've got to look after them as people as well, and that's really important to the holistic approach that myself and the amateur implement because it's not just a football player, it's a person, that's a big part of our ethos and our philosophy in terms of how we work. I've mentioned about London. Um, Sorry, what's the tipping point to move someone over into a professional contract? So with regards to London, if people are suffering, we don't have a professional yeah. contract, which means there's a risk of moving yeah. for a deadly squat. What's the tipping point to put a player like that on a professional contract to safeguard us yes. for that type of scenario? We're working on that just now. We're working on it so that we can, you know, because the reality is these players will get expenses, it's not a lot of money. But, you know, with, with the way the changes in the SPFL have been made, you can have like, a professional contract part time or, or, or full time. So the, the, the challenge for us as a club, because a lot of admin goes into this, and I, you know, try to do as much as I can, but I've got good support with Calm down the stairs as well. But the plan is to transfer them all on so they all become assets. You know, it must be a bit difficult, kind of, Paul, to be able to kind of bring these guys, give them a contract and pay them enough to go full time. But could we give them a contract team although they're no full-time? Yes. Yeah, right. So that yeah. would be the answer, because we're yes. never going to be able to give them enough yeah. in the short term that yeah. would allow them to give up yeah. their school teaching job, for instance. I'll give you an example as well. Amy Anderson. Amy Anderson was the second signing I made. She was playing with Hammond, the Hammond captain, but she's a season ticket holder here with her family. Mm -hmm. And they sit in the main stand, and their whole family are passionate among the supporters. Now she's in a position where she always wanted to come here and play, but it was never right. And my message to Amy was, and there's the time to come and play here. And she loves it, and even Sunday, her mum and dad made the decision not to come here, but to come and watch her play. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like, so for them as a family, you know, not, not every single player in, in, in our Motherwell first team are Motherwell supporters, but I tell you what they do, they get everyone for the football club. They have absolutely everything, and we're trying to reward that. You know, they're in a position now, they've probably never had it as good, yeah. even though we're still trying to drive things and take it to the next level, so. Um, and sponsorship for the girls' academy becomes important. I want to give the kids more. You know, they've got one set of training kit, and I'm asking to train four times a week. You know, they've get they've just got their new, their new strips and their hat. They've, they've got, you know, but you know, we, we want to try and you know, take this to the next level. And you know, yourself, we need the resources to do that. Better quality, a coach, better this, better that. You know, that that comes with investment. And obviously, the model is to is to, is to develop players. Hopefully, and, and we get in a position where we can. You know, generate some revenue if these players go down south. The reality is, a lot of English clubs now come here first because of Brexit, and that's why London Pollard was at Manchester United and other clubs will be looking at her as well. And she's just been selected for Scotland 19s today as well. So, there's you know, there's real, there's been huge progress made. Can I show you push This is your new, we've moved to K Park, um, we've been up there, it's magnificent for us to try to generate a match the experience. Which is going to be really important because I want to capture the supporters here. You know, the, the game out there, the, the, the ultra section was there as well, which was brilliant. Wrong a bit of noise, you know. But how can how can we you know engage with more supporters? That's really going to be really important for us. Grow attendance at the home games. Uh, I think on Sunday we had 80. On Sunday before that we were over 200. I think it was 217 against Celtic, 209 against Glasgow City, which is brilliant. Yeah, Glasgow City and Celtic will bring. A lot of supporters, but you know, even Sunday we dominated it. You're seeing what you're seeing for the first time in a long time is, is young girls and Motherwell strips on. But even in one of the things that we spoke about is even they get the club shop, but they'll be there with a pay care Motherwell strip. So, and that's some stuff that we've spoke about to, to have you know, maybe separate merchandise, whether it's the women's first team and stuff like that. Just you know, how can we be creative in terms of thinking? Grow attendance, and that becomes through the match the experience. And I'm working with, 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 with local colleges to try and get media volunteers to to come in, and, and how we can generate more, you know, more publicity around it. The media team here are, are, are really, you know, they're, they're really obviously stretched at the moment. Um, but this is about us trying to build the foundations for the future. I spoke there about a five-year plan. For me, how I can grow the department and more staff, that then takes some of the workload for me. And it means that we can go and, you know, if I had somebody there to go, let's go and chat doors. You know, that's what I'm looking for. I, 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 the reality for me is I, I can't do all that. That one club mentality, I know the manager spoke about, and how we engage with local schools in the area and stuff like that, which is going to be important. 
and even if it doesn't clash with the men, how can we get more supporters, whether it be male, female, boys, girls, up to watch the team play? Well, do you use somebody from the media team every game? Scott Gibson. He's there all the time. Hope us. Right. I'm only kidding. Right. Uh, no, he's a good lad. I've noticed that he's been posting after most games, he does the same as he goes on the pitch. Aye, aye, aye. I, 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 I wasn't I, sure because you said I, they were stretched if that had stopped. I, I love the creativity that the first team have aye. and see that raw emotion after the game. Yeah. We've done that a couple of times aye. and he's captured like me in the changing room a couple of times aye. as well. So. But he's there every week. Scott's there, Scott Charles was, but Scott's stretched. No, that's why I was aye, asking, he's, right. he's doing the men and, uh, and, and stuff like that. But Scott's no, he's been really, really good. And, Players love it, see the social media and, and the interest and the growth of that, they love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. You're heading his next steps. If you had to say what is the most important next step, what would you say it is? It's probably twofold in terms of the first team and try to make sure that we get them in that top half. First team. Um, for academy, we need to be able to compete with these you know, these top teams because what we're finding just now is that the kids are losing the games heavily. Eh? I talk constantly to our players, I never put pressure pressure on their players. I never put pressure on me to take Glasgow City to 98 minutes. I put pressure on them to go to Hibs and win. Our biggest challenge for me, whether it be academy level, whether it be is can we bridge the gap? And that is that's the message constantly. And what I also I tell the parents for the academy is just trust the process. See the process we're in at the moment, trust it, because I get everybody wants to win every single game. The reality is for now in terms of what we're building, we don't have. And is it simply down to funding and investment for for those two elements to come into play? Certainly at first team. At first team, uh, I, I would probably say for all the you know, when you think about Celtic and Rangers budgets in Glasgow City, it's an absolutely incredible. But I need to, we need to stay with these teams. Yes. Are you sorry? Are you involved in, in any way in the, the community trust participation end of things? Because these are two different things. Participation is, let's the kids come in and enjoy yes. themselves. Yeah. Are you involved in that? No, I'm not. It's not, it's not anywhere near my name. But what I do is... These that two don't mix very well. Well, they trust about their own people. They, uh, aye, aye. No, there's yeah. two completely separate identities within the football club. Right. But what I do... What I do is make sure there's a pathway there. So even though the community, the community first is there for participation, there's still going to be a couple of special players in there. Yes. You so know, your, 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 your yeah. granddaughter came for the community yeah. trust. Yeah. There's a route there, but you know that's where it becomes part of a performance environment. Sometimes you're making difficult decisions. But like, say, like Andy Thompson's come in there. He's one of the new development officers. So Andy and Andy have got a really good relationship. So Andy would tell me. Yeah. Hi there, Hi, and, Andy. Would, Andy would. Sure. Aye, 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 aye. Um, that's a good act by the way. Um, so Andy Thompson would then come to me and say, Paul, listen, there's a couple of young players who are within the community trust we think should look at. So see tomorrow at four o'clock, I'm going to go and watch them train the community trust to see if they're good enough to come into the academy. Good. Andy should be able to recognise... I know Andy is because of our relationship and there's a trust there as well, so Andy will tell me X, Y and Z and he come and watch them, you know. Whereas that's, that's the challenge for me and Leanne and the rest of the staff is how good we need to be tactically. And that's why I'm going to Ibrox right now to watch this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.